was a lovely break. Oh, I'm so I won't mind coming here again because if there's a cup of tea at the end, you don't mind. It's it makes a difference, doesn't it? Oh yeah. Oh, can you? Oh, that's lovely. God, it's beautiful. You can't you can't believe if people are sunning themselves and it gives them a little bit of an income anyway, doesn't it? program your name in. <laughs> Very good. Always one. <laughs> He's the leader, I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> Thanks. Brilliant that. Manifold Valley. Takeaway open. Cup of tea and an ackles cake. It's 23 degrees now. A blue sky. Perfect motorbiking weather weather. I think of all the bikers in Wales and Scotland at the moment who are not allowed to do this. Maybe next week, guys. I've got to come out here again. This is uh, a spectacular ride out. Such a good bike, just this light and nimble. If I could afford two bikes, what a beautiful area! Manifold Valley. Wasn't expecting this. The driving lights come into their own.
very nice farmer. I, keep, I think I keep saying we're in Derbyshire, but we're not, we're in Staffordshire now. But we're still in the Peak District. Just a beautiful part of the South Peaks. Dovedale, we went through before. Manifold Valley. Beautiful, beautiful area. Now the roads have opened up a little bit. It makes biking. Now back into Derbyshire. The Derbyshire Dales. Beautiful. These are biking roads, aren't they? Hartington. You see how Jeff is right down to 30 mile an hour before he hits the actual speed limit signs. He's not doing 40, 50 into 30 and then slowing down. He actually goes through the signs at exactly 30. So disciplined when it comes to speed. Hartington's a beautiful village. Normally we always stop here for coffee, sandwich, breakfast, but like everywhere now, it's quite dead. All those seats, all those seats and... I'm just going to get a bit of cheese actually. Is it open? It's open. Well, ride around and have a look. I'm not sure. Jeff wanted to get some cheese, but uh, I don't know why the old cheese shop is closed. Never mind, it's closed. It says it's closed. I know, I don't know why. I think that sign is left up all year round. Isn't it lovely? There are so many cafes here. Every chair strapped up. Who can blame anybody?
This is a tricky thing to overtake. Here we come into Matlock by a route I never knew existed. And where we come into Matlock, I've got no idea. I thought I knew every way into Matlock. Wow, look at these places they're building. Apartments, I presume. Great afternoon. Really, really good ride. Perfect weather. And you learn so much when you ride with Jeff. Just watching him, his style of riding, his positioning, safety, everything. And quick, where it's feasible, where it's safe. So a good ride. And a good test on the GoPros with their new uh, battery backup on the one on the helmet. I just checked after two hours the battery backup is at 82%. It was 100% when I started. Well, that's unbelievable because normally, after an hour or so, the battery backup, the power bank, is, is finished. If this is right, I could go all day without changing batteries. This would be just incredible. I actually find it quite surprising. I thought I would have been, uh, would have drained it by now. It charges continually while ever I'm not filming. So you only film for certain periods of time, minutes here, minutes there. Most of the time you're not, and in between time, it is charging itself. The same with the, uh, the little GoPro 5 session on my handlebars filming back at me. Uh, that is plugged into the Hex Easy Cam system, so that's always charging straight. Well, you can't change the batteries on the sessions on that model, so it, if it ran out in half an hour, there'd be no chance. So I've always plugged that one in, wondering whether it would charge. Now, when you go into GoPro sites, it often tells you you cannot charge them while they're in use. It's not strictly true. What it means is that you cannot charge them while you're filming, but you can leave them plugged into the charger. They can do that. It doesn't charge when you're filming, but it charges in between. That's all you're asking for. And that keeps the battery topped up enough so you don't have to change it. What a relief that is. So this opens up the world of videoing so much more because of the problem of the batteries running out every half an hour and stopping. And when you're doing a big trip around Europe or even, even around Britain, when you're going out uh, doing two, three hundred miles in a day, tour of Scotland and Wales when you can, stopping every half an hour is so destroying because of course you don't so you film and then your batteries are dead and you go on and then you're in the best place ever and you've got no way of filming it you stop you've got to take it all apart put the batteries in the other guys on the bikes are on and gone and you're catching them up and ah 
So if this if this power bank actually works for twenty pounds, I thought it might be quite good to show you the little power bank device I spoke about in this video that I've just received and had it for a couple of days. Uh, I'm quite amazed by it. You can see with my hand there what sort of size we're talking about. It's a little block actually, it's quite heavy. Not the sort of thing you would tape to your helmet as some people have done. It's called the T-Core. I don't suppose that's a brand that anybody's ever heard of but it's £20 on Amazon and it's rated at 10,000 milliamps. I have a cable that comes from the unit in my pocket and just plugs into the audio part of the GoPro that is on my helmet so I can get off the bike without pulling any cables i just got to remember to unplug the cable before I take my helmet off. So what I like about it is uh, the connections because there are multiple connections. You can't properly see them there but if you go on the website and find it you'll uh, see the description there's USBs in and out and it means that one cable and I only need one cable this one's a little bit too long but it's a cable with a standard USB on one side which can fit in there and it displays the charge 100% at the moment because I charge it up and then this end a C a USB-C goes into the audio adapter on the helmet next to the GoPro itself but then when I get to the hotel or wherever bed and breakfast we're staying the same lead reverses the C goes in here and that goes in my Apple charger and I charge it and I'm getting paranoid now about the amount of cables I've got a cable container a cable bag that is full of about 30 different cables when I go away to so to have one that is just one is just a breakthrough if this works as it did yesterday of my trial run and I can keep the GoPro charged up almost the whole day without changing the batteries then this little device is an absolute breakthrough but before I found that power banks seem to diminish as longer you have them and they end up not keeping their charge so time will tell but at the moment this is a little gem